Well, welcome back to City Line. I am chatting with our fabulous final guests about all the comings and goings here in Tacoma. Please join me in welcoming a very familiar face, Francis Lorenz. You are the vice president of Tacoma Sister. Uh, Sister City Council, welcome back, my dear. It's so great to have you on oh, the show. Oh, thank you, Amanda. It's great to be here. And you just told me something I'm going to share with the rest of the world. You just retired last Sunday. Yes, I did. That was Sunday, October 25 30th. 25 years. Congratulations. Thank you. But that doesn't mean we're not going to see you around. No. Yeah. That You'll just see means me that everywhere. you're doing everything <laughs> Probably else Probably more. more. Yes. <laughs> you brought with you a man uh, that we made reference to but did not really spill the beans about Carlos A. Ortez. What a great name, first off. Welcome, my friend. Thank you. Appreciate um, you. You are a board member for Tacoma Sister Cities International, but you were also going to be speaking on that panel for the United Way um, Poverty... To um, possibilities. Um, possibilities. And mm -hmm. Donna Ponis Pito says he is the best narrator, he's the best storyteller, and he does this to give us a better place in our world. So She's too kind. Thank you. No pressure. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, Francis, 20 years. What is the Sister Cities Council of Tacoma, if we don't know? Well, this is the governing body of, uh, of a nonprofit, which is uh, a, a branch of Sister Cities International based in Washington, D.C. We happen to be in Tacoma around for the since the inception of the entire program, started by uh, Eisenhower. Yes. And our lovely Sylvia Sass established the first committee in 57 uh, with Kokura, now Kirikushu. Yes. Uh, Japan. And so we've been around for 66 years. So in, after being around for 66 years and also just being with Tacoma for that time, why is this so important to the city of Tacoma to have these relationships, do you think? Well, I'll borrow from Marilyn Strickland. Please who do. spoke, uh, and she said no one in Congress she, she works with has very, they have very little understanding of other cultures, other countries, uh, and it's really detrimental to bringing about world peace and uh, international harmony. Yeah, I was going to say that seems wrong. They need to have an abundance of that. Yes, they do. Yeah. So uh, it's a way for everybody to learn about cultures around the world. And we have such a diverse grouping of 13 different sister cities from almost every continent. Wow. So, Carlos, what are the ones that you want to talk about or you love? Yeah. Um, did you want me to discuss a little bit about why it's a little bit different this yes. year? For, okay. Yeah. Uh, let me discuss that real quick because it is really important for sure. Uh, it's the 20th anniversary, so a very special years. milestone yeah, for the uh, Tacoma Sister Cities International Film Festival. Uh, the other thing is we're going to be having the filmmaking forum. So we'll have a panel of film professionals. Yes. And then uh, so we'll have Washington Film Works there. We'll have the Seattle Film Summit as well as the representative from the uh, Seattle Latino Film Festival. So Excellent. it's going to be a phenomenal uh, festival this year. So definitely welcome everybody to come. Uh, and then you want me to discuss a couple other things? Yeah, you bet. Okay. Go right ahead. Uh, the films themselves? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, some of the films that we'll be showing for opening night specifically that I'll be moderating the panel for will be Marina. So that's for opening night on Friday, November 11th, and the doors open at 5 p.m. The film will show at 7 p.m., and the panel is from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. And we'll have uh, a phenomenal panel uh, discussing about the new incentive program that's launching here in Washington State. Uh, it was, you know, about $3 million for many, many years. We finally have upwards of $15 million to wow. be able to provide funding for, you know, different filmmakers, television, and commercial projects. So very exciting time to be here in the Northwest making content. And uh, so Marina, you know, is, uh, it's a uh, can award-winning film. Ooh, yes, that says a lot. For sure. And that's uh, by director Antonetta Alamat Kusijonovic. So that should be a great film to watch. And then, uh, so that will be for opening night. And then uh, another film that I wanted to talk about will be for Sunday, November 18th. Mm -hmm. And that'll be at 6 p.m. at the Blue Mouse. So all the in-person screenings will be at the Blue Mouse Theater. Perfect. The historic one right there on Proctor District. Yep. 
on uh, on Proctor. On Proctor, yeah. Yeah, so it's definitely a great theater, and uh, it should be a great time. You know, definitely come out, show your support. You know, we, we put this together for the community, so we definitely want the community to come out and enjoy these films and also, you know, get out of the house for a little bit. That's right. Yeah. We have some clips we're going to show, and I know that each of you is going to take uh, one of the movies and kind of talk about what you know about. But before we do that, I want to find out how you mentioned the Blue Mouse. That's mm -hmm. how we can see this year's films. Correct. Is there any other way we can see a film? Maybe if we're someone who mm -hmm. um, is autoimmune compromised yes. or we're just not ready to be back in a crowd yet. Absolutely. Yeah. You can go to the website, which is TacomaSisterCities.org. Uh, there will be some virtual showings as well. Oh, good. Yep. So there'll be several films from different countries being shown online. So definitely you can check them out from the comfort of your own home and your PJs. Yes. And just enjoying, you know, uh, you know your, your family at home. So uh, there's going to be a, a lot of great films to be able to watch. And then uh, they do have a festival pass, which I highly encourage, you know, for people to purchase because it will include both the in-person and the online oh virtual my. showings. That yes. is perfect. Very affordable. Okay. So we've got four films that we're going to show clips from. I am so excited about this. Um, and uh, Carlos, you have the first one. Why don't you go ahead and give us the title, and then we'll start to run this. Okay, and that was for Marina, correct? Uh, yeah, actually, it's for The Extraordinary okay. Journey of. Excellent, thank you. So for The Extraordinary Journey of Celeste Garcia, that'll be on Sunday, oh, November 18th at 6 p.m. at Blue Mouth. And then that is uh, presented by Cien Fuegos Cuba. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the director for that is Arturo Infante. Mm -hmm. And then that's uh, about a, a widow whose name is Celeste, living a tranquil and very unadventurous existence in Havana. And then uh, it comes, um, she just goes on this adventure. You know, so there's some cosmic things going on and, you know, some very extraordinary things happening to her. So it's just kind of like, a, I would say, kind of fish out of water story, right? So we, you know, go on her journey. <laughs> and be able to experience some of the things that she's never been able to experience before. Wow, okay, I just wanna step into this movie, I have to tell you that, <laughs> because I wanna to go to Cuba so bad, right. um, but I just love the weaving of what I can see is tradition, but also fantasy as well. Exactly. That's quite fabulous. Okay, so we have another one called, um, that Francis, you're gonna talk about that's from Morocco. Yes, that's uh, Razia, which is, takes place on the streets of, of Casablanca. And there's five different narratives. And it's about uh, people in Morocco who expatriate and then their experiences when they come back home. Mm. And uh, we have a gentleman that we worked with in El Jadida, Morocco, that is going to be offering a discussion of this film who has experienced this. He wow. came to the United States because the state of Virginia didn't uh, uh, have any French teachers and they organized with the federal government to create a program of hiring foreigners to teach foreign languages. So oh that's what uh, he has done and he's going to be discussing uh, the film Razia and the experience of now going back and forth yeah. from the United States to you know, his country. So many times when you sit on the couch and talk about these movies, I, I, I hear that phrase ripped from the headlines because we have Ukrainian brothers and sisters that mm -hmm. are, are right now living this life mm -hmm. yes, that we are. see every day. Let's talk about, Francis, The King's Choice from the, Norway. Okay, The King's Choice uh, is from, uh, is the offering for Allison Norway. It's about three dramatic days that, that happen in April of 1940 when the King of Norway is presented with an ultimatum from Nazi Germany, from the armies, armies and they basically say, surrender or die. And so it's his handling of that event. And the Norwegian films that are historical are quite powerful. They are. They always have been. Um, anything that's Norwegian or Danish or Swedish, uh -huh. I'm all over. Because their films are just, they're, they're tantalizing. Mm -hmm. They're so good. Mm -hmm. So this um, one's going to be good. And then Carlos, uh, the mm -hmm. one from Croatia, Marina. Let's talk about that now. Okay, excellent. Uh, so again, uh, that is, uh, it did win the Camera d'Or at the uh, Cannes Award, uh, or, uh, the Cannes Film Festival. And then uh, again, that's by director Antonetta 
Alamad Kusijanovic, and that's about a teenage girl who decides to replace her controlling father with his wealthy foreign friend during a weekend trip to the Adriatic Sea. So wow. somewhat of a coming of age story. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, just beautiful cinematography as you can see. And that's what it won an award for, it's its cinematography. So definitely a great <coughs> tantalizing visual uh, toward the force. Absolutely. Okay, I, I, I want to see all four of these. <laughs> if I want to see all four of these, that tells me that the other ones I want to see also. Mm -hmm. So I alluded to this a little bit earlier, um, and gosh, what a great clip. This clip, I mean, when you get a clip like this that makes you want to step in, mm -hmm. um, right. that was incredible. So we mentioned that there is a virtual ability um, mm -hmm. in terms of if you don't want to be with people. But if you are someone like myself, who thinks the blue mouse makes amazing <laughs> popcorn. Yes. Um, and <laughs> loves to hang out in Proctor and eat spring rolls at East West Cafe and right. you know, all of that stuff. Do I need to wear a mask into the theater because of COVID protocols, Carlos? Uh, great question. Uh, so masks are optional. So if you okay. feel that's something that'll help you protect yourself, then feel free to all do right. so, but they are not required. I want to say thank you to both of you for being oh, here today. You're so welcome. And as Siskel and Ebert used to say, I'll see you at the movies. Okay. Yes, I'm that <laughs> wraps up another great segment of City Line. It is always a pleasure and a privilege to be in your home. And we've given you some really wonderful things to think about in our community. So please go out there, be a part of the tapestry, and above all, pay it forward. And when you come back, as always, we'll be waiting for you right here at City Line. Take care. Exactly.